Santelli. Welcome to another edition of the program, What's Up on E Street, brought to you by the Bruce Springsteen Archives and Center for American Music on the campus of Monmouth University on the Jersey Shore. Now, for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, the aim of What's Up on E Street basically is to capture the thoughts and feelings of E Street band members and how they're dealing with the COVID pandemic. This week, we're checking in with E Street band bass player, Gary Talent, who's with us from Nashville, Tennessee. How are you, Gary? I'm great. Good to see you, Bob. I actually see you. And you too. And you too. And you too. So, um, just how are things going? How are you coping with this whole COVID pandemic? <laughs> this whole COVID thing. Well, you know, I have to. I have to say that my life hasn't really changed that much. Uh, I uh, I'm a homebody anyway. I've got all my instruments and my toys and uh, and my projects around the house uh, but yeah it's it's definitely changed things I didn't there was no tour plan for this year and as far as my solo album I thought I might do some some club dates with that but um, you know that's uh, that's not gonna happen that was probably a godsend <laughs> um, so um, so the, yeah, my album has kind of uh, came and went already. So um, we've been we started the Delavantes record uh, last year, and we're in the mixing stages of that now. So that's pretty exciting. I'm I'm very happy uh, with the it's the first album we've done together in 25 years. So um, some real cool songs on that, and I'm working on that. As far as uh, my writing, I haven't I. It's my writing has become very political, and and nobody wants to hear that. I don't want to hear it. So I've I've actually been working on some instrumentals uh, with the uh, uh, with Stray Cats in mind, or not Stray Cats, well, Stray Jackets. Uh, ah. So uh, instrumentals are fun. You don't have to worry about words, and um, so that's been that's been my latest thing. Uh, I've been practicing my fiddle, my accordion, my um, guitar, my um, piano. Uh, I do some things for friends, uh, playing bass on on records. Just through, uh, you can do that on the on on the interwebs now. <laughs> you can just sit there. They send you a track. You add your part to it, and you send it back to them, and it comes back all mixed. It's 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 pretty amazing. Uh, you know, I. I the technology is really cool. I was messing with Jay Weinberg on a uh, thing that he's working on. It's called e-jamming. I don't know if this is a secret or not, so maybe I'm letting the cat out of the bag. But it it, it doesn't really work, <laughs> except unless we work on off the same cell tower. So the three of us, a uh, guitar player, Jay and myself, we can make it work on the same cell tower. The latency is not a problem, but they're working on that. That'll be fun when they figure that out. Um, uh, Jay lives in Jay lives in uh, Nashville as well, so you're able to do that. Yeah, he's he's just down the street. So, like I say, that we're working off the same cell tower, yeah. so we yeah. can make it work. We can't get it past that point. Um, Interesting. You know, you, so, you yeah, mentioned just, your album. I'm sorry. You mentioned your album, and uh, you know, you had done some shows. I know. People raved about the show that you did, oh, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago at the Stone Pony. Um, were oh. there plans for you to actually put together a full tour uh, in 2020 and continue to work in the record? Is there? Was there? Was there? Oh, was there? No, I, well, it was, it, was, it was a one gig tour. <laughs> and I lost about $40,000 on that. And I figured, that's probably uh, as good as it's going to get. Um, no, well, the, uh, yeah, actually t just today, today being middle of July, sometime, I, j I just posted something that uh, was from the break time tour that uh, my friend Kevin Montgomery had found on his phone, just a bunch of uh, stuff just that he had recorded on the English part of the tour three years ago and made, re made me remember you know, even though it's, it's expensive hobby, what fun it was, and um, the band was great, and I would love to do it again. Yes, uh, absolutely. But 
you mentioned, you mentioned the Delavantes, and of course, for those who people who know the Delavantes, they too are from New Jersey. You'd work with them a real long time. They put out some records that have been really terrific in the past. If those of you who are tuned in don't know them, you really ought to. Talk about this new record. How did it come about? And they too live in Nashville as well, so I guess that makes it pretty easy. But what's the record all about, and, and what role did you play in it? Um, well, the record is a Delavanti's record. I, I'm the bass player in the band, basically. And um, uh, I was the producer. But these guys, you know, this is 25 years later. They, they are completely capable. Um, I, I stick my opinion in there once in a while. But basically, you know, we did it as a band. We, we got some uh, time at one of the good studios, Blackbird. Blackbird Academy. Uh, here in town is a great studio and, and we got the uh, some time and we cut a bunch of like 14 tracks with just Mike Bob myself and Brian Onings on drums and um, they came out great and we're uh, at the point now where we're mixing and we got um, Bill Schnee who actually um, mixed my uh, last album more, uh, more like me Bill is just moved from LA and just kind of getting used to being in Nashville. So he did me the favor of producing or not producing, but mixing my record. Now he's, uh, he's doing the Delavantes and doing a great time, a great thing. And uh, he's pretty brilliant. And we've just been love, taking our time with it and, and it'll come out when it's ready. There's no, no big hurry, I guess. But, um, that's that's the latest on the Delavantes. I, I, it's all songs written by Mike and Bob, and some great songs, uh, real terrific stuff. It feels great. It's just, um, it's just. Um, I'm excited about the record. So, yeah. I don't you, know. I don't know anymore that if anybody's uh, going to hear it or anything. You know how that goes. You mentioned uh, Low Straight Jackets and and working with them doing instrumental music. Uh, what's the origins of that project? Uh, there's no origins. It's it's something for me to do. Uh, basically, when I got fed up with uh, the notebooks of lyrics I've been writing, um, and you know, it's just it's just not a good time to be writing positive songs. So um, uh, instrumentals are really cool, and and I've always loved them, and I've never never really sat down to write an instrumental, and it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing. I'm also I told you I'm. Uh, practicing the fiddle in case uh, in case uh, the fiddle doesn't show up one night, we can go. You know, I mean, there's always something to do. All right. <laughs> now, is the fiddle is this in your life because you're living in Nashville and you had no choice but have to learn a country music instrument, or or what? Well, um, on the first tour that I did, I had the brilliant Fats Kaplan. He plays fiddle, he plays accordion, he plays mandolin, he plays banjo. And I used all these things uh, on the record and I was lucky enough to have not only him, but his wife, Christy Rose, who sang on the record to travel with me. And it was fabulous. And, but I can't always have that. So I figured, what am I gonna do? So, you got to be prepared. So if that's ain't there, and if there's a fiddle part, I'm going to have to break it out. Plan ahead. As long as I've known you, you've always been a student of music, particularly blues and R&B, and you've had one of the greatest record collections that I know of with, with Southside Johnny. Do you still have that? And do you often go to it? Um, you're sitting around, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and pull out a record like you're doing right now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Jelly, Jelly Roll. Martin. Jelly Roll Morton. Want to hear some <laughs> Jelly Roll? Pristine. The Pearls. King Porter Stomp. Uh, one of the great ones. That's right. So oh, how yeah. big is that collection? And what do you do with it? Do you listen to it? Do you hit on it now? With now that you're home all the time. Well, yeah. Um, problem is that when I've, I've moved around so much, 
The records have been moved so much that every once in a while I'll open up the package and I'll see this. Uh, so you just go. <laughs> Sad. I love my That's... I love my 78s, but it's nothing that sounds better. Oh geez, this one has a crack too. So oh, um that's life. Yeah. Now we have, some, I, I collected all these records over the years just to keep me out of trouble. And, and I figured once I turn 70, I'll have some time to actually go and listen to all these things. And, and won't that be great? And now I turn 70, they have Spotify, they have Amazon, they have all this stuff. I've got all these rare records that I, all I have to do is push a button on the phone and I can listen to it. So um, plans don't always go as, <laughs> as planned as we might know. But I still, yes, I enjoy it. And, um, and I, you know, it, I still love the sound of vinyl. I still get new vinyl when I can. NRBQ is still around, yeah, still yeah. making singles and they're still great. Um, yeah, <clears throat> just sure, I, I, love, I love it all. What, um, um, <laughs> what have, have you been reading? I mean, do you keep up with, um, with, current events and passing the time reading books or reading about music tell me about that a little bit well um <laughs> my my recent uh book has been <laughs> believe it or not bruce springsteen's uh, autobiography i'm about halfway through it which is and uh, only getting to it now yeah um Actually, I, I, the reason I actually finally got to it was because I got it on audio. So I'm listening to him read it to me, uh -huh. which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm big on music buyer. I'm, I'm a one trick pony. I, I like, bi I read uh, um, John Fogarty's biography and, um, well, can't even think right now. The guy from the band would tell me help. Help oh, me. Oh, Robbie here. Robinson's Robbie band. Robinson's Robbie Robinson. Yeah. Terrific, Great book. terrific story. And yeah. even even people that I'm uh, not a big fan of, but I respect people like uh, Freddie Mercury and people that I'm, I can't say I'm a big fan of the music, but I definitely respect it. And the the biographies and the stories behind it are all fascinating to me. I, I'm just a big fan of all all the randomness of this whole business. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I, uh, I've i been doing the same thing, but I've been having this uh, renewed love affair with the Beatles. And I I have a lot of books like you from my years as a journalist and, and doing book reviews and research and whatnot. And I found out, and uh, my wife heard me say this to someone, and she came in and she scolded me because I have 97 books on the Beatles. And she said, what? No wonder why the house is sagging with all these books. And I, I, I probably read about half of them. So I thought, well, now is a good time to, to go back and read them. And, you know, you, of course, have a different perspective because you're in it. You, you are a musician and you can relate to the stories a lot different than, say, I can, not being a musician. Are, are you learning things about the business or about yourself as you read through some of these books? Oh, Absolutely. Every, you're always learning something about something and yourself included, for sure. Uh, well, um, what am I learning? I'm, I'm learning that everything is so random. Random is the word for me. It's like, what are the odds of any, anybody getting over? Somebody does, somebody does. A lot of talented people. It's an amazing amount of talented people out there. And, and you know, I think that, uh, uh, as far as our band, we worked hard, and and, and it, it was a it was a tough struggle. But I'm I'm very proud of what we've done, and um, I hope I hope to do it some more if it makes sense. Uh, we'll we'll see what the future brings. But uh, music music is always the thing that's kept me going, uh, and it doesn't matter whether East Streeters is uh, active or not. I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing something. Yeah. Do you miss touring? Do you miss playing out? Uh, I miss playing out. I don't necessarily miss touring. <laughs> There's a difference there. <laughs> I love playing out if I could just be there. 
But you're yeah. in a good town where you can do that. I mean, Nashville is full of clubs and boy, in the last 10 or 15 years, Nashville has exploded. It's not just country. There are all kinds of musicians who live in Nashville these days. Writers, producers, musicians, session players, great town to be in if you're going to be stuck in one particular town, right? Well, Bob, uh, this is not anything new. This has been going on since the 90s. Uh, I've played on more rock records in this town than I've ever played in, in when I was living in New York and New Jersey. Often uncredited, just I love playing. And, and just if a band has a weak rhythm section and the, the producer needs the tracks done a little quicker, Kevin Montgomery's calling in, I just declined. Um, yeah, I'm doing a, 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 an online thing with Kevin this Sunday. I have no idea what uh, that's gonna be about, but I don't know what this is about either. So <laughs> you gotta do something. <laughs> Good to see you, Bob. I think last time was a, was a ball game somewhere. We, I we missed you were, by a day in Tulsa. That's right, we were at, with the Delavantes, we were to see the Nashville Sounds in Nashville, the, about this night. time last year. Yeah, it was a great night. Yeah, we're about it this time. Yeah, it was, it was. Well, Gary, look, uh, thank you for uh, letting me drop in and, and see how you're doing. And as I said, you know, the whole purpose of this is just to bring fans up to speed as to how you're spending your days in this land of COVID and world of COVID, but also what we just talked about goes into the archives uh, 50 years from now when people do research about this really historic period. You know, they'll hear how musicians are, uh, are handling it and what you're doing. But it sounds like you're keeping busy, which is great. And uh, um, best of luck with all the projects that you're doing. And hopefully uh, we'll get to see you soon somewhere on some stage uh, at some point. Yeah, that'd be nice. I would like that. Good. I'm down with that. Give me Good. the opportunity. All right. Gary, thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. Great to see you, Bob.